For weeks now, thousands of Nigerians have been protesting against a special anti-robbery squad, SAS, a Nigerian unit plagued with allegations of extrajudicial killings, theft and abuse. But what exactly sparked this widespread protest? We now join Arrow Leonard, a media development expert who is a Nigerian and is based in Abuja. Hello, Leonard. So the NSAS protest has been going on for three weeks now. What caused it and what are the recent happenings. We, we know that uh, the Nigerian government announced on October 11 that it, the, the, the unit is being disbanded, but Nigerians seem to want more. So what exactly caused this? Thanks, Gladys, and thanks for having me here. Um, honestly, this end SARS protest is not something you could pinpoint to anyone and say, okay, this is how it really started. It's something that had been building over time. Um, the issue of police brutality in Nigeria has been on for as long as I can remember. We remember Fela Anikula Pokuti, the popular musician. He led a campaign on this and sang a lot of songs in the 70s about this issue. So it had been building over time. But what happened a couple of weeks ago was the killing of young people in two locations. And youths in those locations, I think in Lagos and Delta, um, came out to protest. Now, those videos went, were posted on the internet and they went viral. Nigeria has a very, you know, um, vibrant internet society. To it. So any of such videos that go online tends to trend really fast. And, you know, that now tallied with the NSAS campaign hashtag that had been on for some time, you know, on social media. And so groups started coming together and... That's how the protest started. Um, honestly, it had been very peaceful. It started very peacefully. Um, you'll find musicians, celebrities coming out. Nobody, you know, harassed, nothing. You find protesters protest, and then they clean up the environment after protesting. You know, it, it had never really happened like this before. The, the protests have been really, really, really peaceful and well organized. In fact, if, if you are an event manager, you would really, you really trip for the organizers of the protest. You know, well organized, you know, no violence and all that. Until a few days back where I think some other groups started springing up and there were a few attacks on the protesters that led to some um, violent issues. And then... There was also cases of where police were still attacking some of the um, protesters. So apart from that, it's been relatively peaceful. And um, what's happening currently, like yesterday, um, a group of hoodlums have now hijacked the protest. And there were a few burnings of some police facilities in a couple of states, at those states, for instance. They burnt about three police facilities there and attacked a, a correctional center, prison, what you call prison, and released some inmates. And, um, but those activities were not by the NSAS protesters. In fact, in a, in a certain location yesterday, the NSAS protesters were not even there. They did not come out. But another group came out and it became violent. Coffee has been imposed in... Um, at those states and even Lagos, coffee will be starting in Lagos from 4 p.m. Um, today and... Well, you know, Leonard, the protests seem to have inspired thousands of people around the world. What else is happening and what is the government doing about it? Yes, yes. Honestly, this NSAS protest has really inspired a lot of young people across the globe. We've seen celebrities, popular celebrities, you know, lend their voice to the NSAS campaign. Nigerian footballers playing in international clubs, take Victor Simon for instance. They've all lent their voices to these major news channels across the globe, you know, popular um, online handles, Twitter handles, Instagram handles of real popular sites, you know, using the NSAS um, hashtag. Honestly, I'm not sure the government really knows how to handle this situation. I don't think the government has really understood it um, because the response has not been, you know, really definite. 
Um, currently, no government official whatsoever has come out to speak against the issues. In fact, the government statements from government officials show that they are aware and agree with the issues the protesters are talking about. So there's no issue around that. Now, this protest probably would have stopped by now or died down a little bit, moved out of the streets and just stayed online. But for the announcement of the Inspector General of Police changing SARS to SWAT, now that came so sudden and we've had such issues in the past. SARS was not SARS before. SARS had been reformed twice before and all that. So the young people saw it like, okay, one of those statements again, you know, you just make the statement, you change a name and then everything is fine. So everybody go back home. No, this is different. So... I think that action sparked a bit of anger, and so the whole thing took a, a, a different um, dimension altogether. But I know the government, um, there are meetings in various sectors. Um, the president has directed, um, I think, panels of inquiries in various states to look into the killings. I think there's another government initiative to pay cons compensation to victims and several others like that. The Minister of Youth and Sports, Sunday Dari, met with the president yesterday to also talk about the issue. So there are actions taking place by the government at different levels. But I'm not sure the government knows exactly how to address this protest. Now, so how exactly do you expect or do you as a Nigerian expect the government to react to this situation? Um, <laughs> honestly, what I expect the government to have done is not to have done what they currently did. Um, First of all, one of the problems we have with leaders across is they are, they, the way they communicate with people. You know, in Africa, a lot of leaders find it difficult to communicate, and the silence is what sparks up a lot of issues. So first, I would have expected the president to speak up immediately. The protest started and addressed the, the protesters by any means. You know, even through whoever, like some of the governors did. You take, for example, the governor of Lagos State came up, spoke to them, you know, sprung into action immediately, visited the family of one of the victims and things like that. And then the announcement by the IGP, you know, changing SARS to SWAT was a really big mistake because um, I would have expected them to just apologize, admit to some of the, um, admit to the issues raised and then set up, you know, proper investigative um, panels that are very, um, you know, um, open. And then say a couple of things that, you know, they would do to reform the police system and, and things like that. And I think this would have died down. But announcing SWAT immediately was just like taking, you know, people for granted. And I think that is what made the, the protest to take a different dimension and, and you, you know, taking a life that the, nobody knows where it's going to anymore. What I'd like to find out, Leonard, is if we have any reaction from members of the SARS. Are they saying anything to the allegations? Um, so far, there's not been any reaction from direct SARS officials. They, they are not allowed to react like that or, or say anything about issues. Rather, it's those they report to, like you've had the commissioners of police, the inspector general of police, and and um, such people, those are the people, you know, um, allowed to speak out, out about such issues. And the, the truth is, they've all, none of the police officials that have spoken has really said what the group is alleging is not true. Um, in a few cases, there's been some apology for, for their excesses. You know, but none of that has really gone down well with the protesters. What they are asking for is that those um, bad eggs among the police are brought to book. And that is what we are yet to see. 
the police say they've set up um, panels of inquiry and all that. They are investigating the cases, but people want to see action. They want people to be brought to book and then something done concrete about the, the real overhauling of the police system. Well, to end our discussion today, Leonard, what do you think is going to be the outcome of this uh, protest that seems to have lasted longer than any other strike action in Nigeria? Yes, the, the, <laughs> you see, that, that was part of the issue. Like I said, the government disbanded the SARS, but you see, the issue of police brutality did not start with SARS, has been in existence for as long as I can remember. Fela and Nicola Pokuti, the popular musician, you know, spoke vigorously about police brutality in the 70s, released several songs about police br brutality, and that lasted for a long, 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 long time. So it's been there for a very long time. Now, the issue is not just the SARS, it's actually police altogether. You know, so what they are really asking for is more of a total reform of the police um, sector. And even the SARS unit, you go to the SARS office, you have people from different sectors of the police. Not all of them are, are the operational SARS that commit these atrocities. So it's a total reform in the police sector that they are really asking for. Now... If you look at salaries of police officers, where they live, the police barracks and things like that, it's, it's all in a sorry state. A police officer earning just 50,000 naira, how can you take care of your family and things like that? So the, the, the protest is also about, you know, better pay for the police and other security um, um, people and all that. But the larger part is... The fact that it's also a call for good governance. Take the young people involved in this protest, for instance. A, a lot of them don't have jobs. Okay, I'm recording now. There's no electricity. It's gone off. Okay, now, for, for a lot of the protesters, going to join the protest is now work for them. Because they'll have an opportunity to, you know, mix up with people, dance to good music and all that. The way the protest has been organized in Nigeria here, yeah, we know how to make fun out of a lot of things and really have excitement. So all these issues, but when they get back home, what do they go back to? Do they have food to eat? You know, and then take the society as a whole. The, the issue of their posts online about claiming that there are people that are also SARS beyond the SARS police. For instance, um, those who provide services, government officials, anybody who takes anybody else for granted and tries to oppress somebody is also seen as SARS in, in, in quotes. So it really goes beyond, beyond that. Um, and honestly, hashtags don't go away so quickly. So I don't think this protest would die down so easily. Um, because even some of the actions, if, if you have to follow, if the government is slow as they are, the slower they are, the more the, the protest will last. Now, um, a lot of these issues have been going on for a long time, but you at least see cases where... Um, Airing officers are being brought to book, shown to the public that, oh, this person has been disciplined and all that. There's been a case of someone being, being dismissed and then the person was seen still in the police uniform in the police office. You know, things like that. Well, Leonard, it was a pleasure having you today on the program. Hope we talk again another time. Thanks a lot, Gladys, and thanks for having me here. I've been following CRTV for so many years now from my home in Abuja. I'm hoping that these end SARS protests would lead to something positive, not just for Nigeria, but for the entire Africa. Thanks a lot. 
Well, that was uh, Aro Leona, the media development expert based in Nigeria. And with him, we we're talking about the NSAS protest that has been going on in Nigeria for three weeks now. That does it for today's supplement. Thanks for staying with us.